Welcome to the Sam Livecast, everyone. It's a happy Monday, and we're here talking food and other nonsense. If people say that Mondays suck, but come on, Livecast Mondays. Uh, you know, get I better think than that. it's it's funny. Um, since I began my Sam the Cooking Guy career, mm-hmm. I appreciate Mondays because it's a it's a work week. Yeah, but it's an opportunity for things to happen. Absolutely. Um, you know, people, oh, get back to you, then it's Thursday and Friday and you don't hear, and then you got to wait through the weekend. I feel like it's an opportunity to get business going again. I yeah. can imagine people that hate their jobs. Well, then it doesn't matter what fucking day of the week it is, am yeah. I right? You know, it, it, but the thing is, it's, it's really different uh, for us, I think, because we just have a different... I, I, what I mean is it's different for people like us who don't have a normal 9-to-5 job in an office right. and then people who do. Monday is a whole different thing I, if you're waking up and going to the office that no, you despise. No, here's what it is. It's if you like your job or not, that's all that matters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're an accountant and you love the office and you love the numbers and you love the computer and you love that kind of problem-solving stuff, uh-huh. it doesn't matter what day it is. As long as you love your job, you're going to dig it whatever day. If you hate what you do, then Monday is probably the worst day of the week. So is that what happened to you when you were in biotech before the cooking guy? I mean, you just went in there and you were like, I, hated I hate it. this. I said... My last year there, as I drove into the parking lot, every single day that I went, I said, not this fucking place again. Every single day of my last year at the company. And it had nothing to do really with the company. Mm -hmm. Uh, Biotech is a great business. If, as I said, if you like it, I didn't like it. I wanted to do something else and I was miserable. So Mondays then in those days for me were terrible. Even worse than normal days. (laughs) Uh, yes, because there was five of them stacking up and that was the first one. Yeah. I mean, you're, you know, at least Wednesday, you're sort of on the downhill slope of Hump maybe day. a job that you hate. <laughs> and I feel bad for people that hate their job. It's brutal. I mean, they need to find some outlet, some way to satisfy themselves. If not in a career, mm-hmm. if you're, if you're, if you're a singer, but maybe you're not a professional singer, but you wish you could sing. Maybe that's not a whole future for you, a whole career path for you, but maybe singing in musical theater on weekends is. Mm -hmm. I tell people, try and find an outlet for the things that you really, really like. I think that's very important. Oh, yeah. If you can't do it all the time, then maybe you do it part of the time, and I think that helps smooth out the rest of your life. I had a teacher come up to me after an event where I spoke my story, Sam the Cooking Guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I went from hating my job in biotech to what I do now teacher came up after and said you know you've inspired me i want to act and i'm thinking about quitting and i went whoa 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 but sister let's put the brakes on just because i jumped off a cliff not <laughs> knowing what was below me doesn't mean i condone that behavior oh, and i don't it wasn't it wasn't smart then it worked out but i don't know that i would do it the same way again but i said wait a minute acting is difficult i mean everything's difficult yeah but what happens if you quit your teaching job and you get out there and you find you suck <laughs> or you don't like it? How about you get involved in some community theater at nights or on weekends? Mm-hmm. At the very least, if you do not find a full-time acting career, I believe this outlet for the one part of your life that you really do want to be involved with more, it's going to A, make you happier, and B, it's going to make you a better teacher. It's going to make you a better teacher because you'll be happier in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You won't begrudge the fact that you have to go and teach those fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever age, whatever grade kids. Mm -hmm. You'll be a much happier person. Anyway. I mean, I'm curious to know what made you take the leap. Because as you just said, I mean, you you might not do it again. Here's what it was. You were... I was like 13. 11 years ago, right? Yeah. You were 13. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I was... You, maybe you've heard me say this. They say an alcoholic or a drug addict has to hit bottom before they're prepared to mm-hmm. accept help or help themselves or yeah. find a way out of their situation. I think I just hit career bottom, Max. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I was so miserable. You can't go to work and say not this effing place again every time and not have it start to affect you. And finally it did. And I looked for a way out. I've told the story. I went through the newspaper looking for anything in the help wanted general section that, that caught my eye. Yeah. 
I imagine my finger would hit some job description and the hand of God would touch my shoulder and boom. I'd hear angels and <laughs> boom, and the room would light up and, and everything would go dark on the newspaper except for that one little column inch of type. Mm -hmm. And whatever it said, hotel night auditor, I would do that because that would be for me. And it didn't work out because it's a ridiculous way to try and find a career. <laughs> it's a ridiculous way to try and find something you spend 30% at least of your life doing. Yeah. Eight hours a day, work eight, recreate eight, sleep eight. Roughly, I know people do more or less of some of those things. But approximately 30% of your life is spent working. And I spent 30% of my life hating what I did for a living. I finally hit career bottom so bad that I needed to find a way out. And I was looking at anything. And I finally said to myself one day, I'm going about this the wrong way. I'm trying to find some pre-existing job to fit myself into. What would make me happy? How about just answer that one question? Yeah. And that, the answer was I wanted to go to Tokyo. And then that became me thinking about trying to start a travel show that was sadly derailed by 9-11. I was forced to come up with something else. I found cooking because I thought it was something that I could teach people to do. Not that I cooked. I didn't. I was going to be like my own weakest link. Do simple stuff. If I could make it, other people could do it. And that, that's the story right there. I can drag that out to two hours. I just I, did it in five minutes. I can't believe that you haven't written an autobiography yet. Wolf. That's coming, people. How great no, is this I don't know. story? I feel you like need to I, put this on paper. I feel like, yeah, I, you know, who's going to buy the book? I feel like... Uh, Your fans? People yeah, who want to be inspired? Like people need... who hate their I, jobs I guess, and see you I guess, as a role model? Right. I mean, you took a huge leap of faith. I took a huge leap of faith when I had three kids and a mortgage and cars and shit like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, that's why I, I say to people that are younger, that don't have those... Start those, while you can. Those... those those things to hold the commitments. Thank you. Things to hold them you know back what Carola a little calls bit. It? Yeah. He calls it his, the monthly nut, like what you have to spend every month to it, maintain your life, whether that's mortgage car payments what it is. for your kids. We all have that some greater, some lesser. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But the point is, and I would say to anybody being happy takes precedent over any money that you will make. Mm -hmm. There's a book out there called do what you love. The money will follow. And it's true. What it means, if it all works out that way, is that if you do what you like, you'll do it better than the next guy. Mm -hmm. Take an example of two guys that sweep floors, right? Yep. You think it doesn't go anywhere? Maybe it doesn't, maybe it does. Two guys sweep floors. One guy loves his job, the other guy hates his job. So the guy that loves his job, he's going to sweep the floor better than anybody else. He's going to really care about it. And when it times for somebody to get moved, time for somebody to get moved up the ladder, who are they going to go to? They're going to go to the guy that's doing the best job. And the guy who's doing the best job is the guy who loves his job. So it doesn't matter what you do. As long as you like it, you can potentially find a way to have it be way more money for you. At the very least, you'll be happy. And honestly, on your last day on this planet, what's going to matter more? What's in the bank or the happiness that you found? And I know there's going to be assholes out there going to go, no, it's only about the money. Well, that's fine. If that works for you, then just let that be how you lead your life. But I'm telling you right now, it's the happy quotient. It's that part of it. That on my last day, that's what I'm going to remember. All the other stuff won't matter. I will want to look back and go, wow, it was great. I had an amazing time. I have a lot of friends and family that I enjoyed being with. I liked what I did. I went to work. I did my thing. It was great. Satisfaction. That's what I'm looking for. Amen. Internal satisfaction. Wow. Amen. Starting the show off on a serious note. Didn't mean to do that. No, Didn't it's all good. That. We like it. Let's, uh, let's dive into what we're doing this week, which is? Well, uh, today I'm making a pancake because tomorrow, February 5th, is National Pancake Day. Yeah. At least it's National Pancake Day according to IHOP. <laughs> there may be a different one, but IHOP has made a big enough noise about it, National Pancake Day. So I'm doing a German pancake. Right there. That's like a that. picture. Uh, also called a Dutch baby, also called a puffy pancake. <laughs> also called a Dutch baby. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch baby. I don't know why. Dutch baby, German pancake, puffy pancake. Way you see, it's... Uh, what's the opposite of labor-intensive? Labor-not-intensive? Easy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, uh, just simple. <laughs> Maybe there's another way to put that. Anyway, 
You make it, you dump it in a uh, pan that's hot, you let it bake up in the oven, whoosh, it rises. It's really cool. Hey, if you guys are out there and you want to follow along with the recipe, all you got to do is go to thecookingguy.com and search German pancake. It's right there. So you right can just kind of scope out the recipe while we're doing this. There and then also go to the same livecast.com <laughs> for all of our new episodes. And we did Super Bowl week last week and it was unbelievable. We made some great stuff and you can catch all those episodes there. Wait, hey, will you go back to that? Three to what? Of milk and flour. To the recipe? Oh, yeah, yeah, three eggs. All right, I forgot about that. I was going to do two eggs. I love that but, you put AKA Dutch baby. <laughs> well, because some people might know it as that. The most it gorgeous, is. light, puffed pancake you've ever had. It's the pancake that my mom has every time she goes to Elmer's in Palm Springs. <gasps> it's Elmer's, what she gets. Wait, is Elmer's that place that we used to go with our yes, family? Yes, for yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, my yes, God. Yes. It's like a... It's like a pancake house. Yeah, it's like a... Exactly, and grandma a would place. always get... I mean, she still does. She gets the... She gets... I don't know what they call it there. Dutch baby, whatever. Oh, we used to go there so much. Yeah. We used we to go did. there when we were... Like, I have maybe not in 10 years, but... Hey, I learned something the other day that I will share with uh, anybody who's listening. Uh, and maybe maybe only the men need to hear this. I don't know. But I think <laughs> it's a good lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, so I bought, I bought uh, Kelly... A, just celebrated her 50th birthday. Brought her a very pretty ring. And so I'm at the store, and they're wrapping it up, and they put it in a little box. And there's only women behind the counters, the mm -hmm. two, three of them there. And I say, you know what I'm thinking of doing? I think I might take this, because it, clearly it's a ring box, and disguise it. They go, what do you mean? <laughs> I go, I think I might put it in a bigger box that looks like a, like a clothing box or something, yeah. you know? And, and, and stuff it with like that tissue paper so when she squeezes it, it feels like, oh, there's a shirt or something in there. Yeah. And I go, I think I, I might do that. And all of them almost in unison went, bad idea, bad idea, don't do that. <laughs> Why? I go, what's the problem with that? And they said, here's the thing. A little box is clearly a ring. It clearly, at least a piece of jewelry. You see it, you instantly get excited. It's going to be jewelry because women love jewelry. You put it in something else, they may be thinking they're getting something special, and now you come out with it from behind your back and you go here and it now it looks like a pair of pants or something. <laughs> the excitement level of the recipient goes from here down to here. Yes, it will come back up, <laughs> but not as much as if they think all along they're getting this. Yeah, you don't want to have to deal with that fluctuation. You they just want to totally hear, threw me all off up, that. All up. <laughs> totally threw me off of that. Exactly. That's awesome. Well, I, hopefully we can uh, get a shot of that ring. I want to check it out. Yeah, it's really pretty. You'll like it. Hey, before we move on, yeah. I just wanted to give a big, big thank you to Mert Cox. She said, Max, just want to say you're doing a really great job. You're a great foil for your dad. Very knowledgeable tech and otherwise. Oh, Maybe we should God. call it the Sam and Max show. God, what, Mert, a, ki what a kiss you. ass you are, I Max. Love you, Mert. Thank you so much. And what a kiss much. ass she is. <laughs> oh, come on. Love her too, but God. Maybe the Max and oh, Sam Max, show. Max, you're so good at what you do. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Mert. I love you. Some of his co parent voters are going to be there. Just making sure my... Okay. All right. I'm good. Uh, oh, and hey, really quickly. Yeah. Just to, uh, just to get back from our fries discussion from yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah. remember? Yes. We were talking, we're talking about, about French uh, fries. floppy Somebody, and French fries and stuff. You said if you order your French fries at McDonald's without salt, they'll mm -hmm. make them fresh for you. Yes. Uh, Larry uh, enlightened us on Facebook that you can order li fries light at In-N-Out which means they're not cooked as much. And he says that that means they're going to come out more floppy. I don't want floppy. But some people do. I told you Jilly likes floppy. I don't get that. I mean, I, I don't want people super just... crispy. I don't want toothpick fries, but I want... See, I like to... So, you know like the little crunchies at the bottom yeah. of a thing of fries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people throw those away. Those yeah. are my favorite. That's your favorite? Yeah. Well, then you wouldn't want floppies. I wouldn't want floppies. No. Hey, Larry posted on Facebook.com slash Sam the Cooking Guy. The link is right there. We love you guys to go and post things there. Uh, we know we're not live, but Thank if you, you guys post stuff, we're, you know, we're always checking in. And I love to get questions from you guys. Okay, I got 11 things here that uh, the Huffington Post printed as things that uh, you hate about waiters and restaurants. Okay. <clears throat> I don't think they're in any particular order. Some of them bug me, some of them don't. Number one, let me ask you if this bothers you. Mm -hmm. Does it bother you when a waiter introduces himself by name? Hi, I'm Danny. I'll be your server tonight. Hmm. As opposed to just coming and saying, hi, yeah, I'm your server you guys, tonight. How are you guys doing? You don't even need... Obviously, they're no, the see, server. I, th I think they just come up and go, how are you folks tonight? Wait, Huffington Post says these are things that they don't this like? Is, no, this is a list of... This is a list they posted of things that 
people don't, don't like, like waiters doing. See, I think I'd like, I'd prefer to have them introduce themselves because if they're walking around, you can be like, hey, Kitty, can can we grab know, something? It just feels a little bit like TGI Fridays or, you know. I guess, yeah. Or, uh, I don't know, someplace like that. Uh huh. Clearly, the better restaurants don't do that. Mm -hmm. I get your point. I think it would be nice to say, hey, Matt, uh, I sometimes ask their name. Yeah. If I like them right off the bat so I can call them by their name yeah. later, like to, to your point. You're also a different case because normally waiters are really into you. Well, no, I don't no, I don't know that that's true. They are. But. They are. They're, are you kidding? Uh, th who wouldn't be stoked to be a server and be able to serve Sam the Cooking oh, Guy? Oh, God. I, except what for the people who don't that? like you. you're you. kissing my ass. Except for Gummy Bear. <laughs> you are a Gummy oh, Bear. Oh, you know what? We have to do our daily uh, Gummy Bear Here mention. It is. Gummy Bear says... Gummy Bear said after watching a YouTube video, hey, I remember this faggot. Wow, everyone in Cali sounds like a total stoner douche. There you go. Uh, the number two things people hate about what waiters do in restaurants, mm -hmm. they touch you and they think it's friendly. They come to the waiter. How oh, are you That's tonight? creepy. The hand on the shoulder. That's too weird. Just there. That's, I don't want to be touched yeah, by no, them. no. I'm not into that. Not while you're eating. How about this? Number three, they say everything that you ask about on the menu, mm -hmm. everything is really amazing. Oh, the mussels? Mussels are amazing. You have to, Oh, the meatloaf? This is the best meatloaf. Wow, I've had this meatloaf oh, eight times. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. It's so amazing. Doesn't the get eggs better. benedict? Are you kidding with the crab? Amazing. Uh, number four, wait forever to take your drink order, bring menus, or offer water. Yes, of course. Nobody likes that. Oh, yeah, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> Ask if you've dined there before and if you know how this restaurant works. Hi, folks. You've been here before? Uh, can I tell you how the menu works? That's yeah. You read an item and then you decide if you want it. Is that how this works? Oh, I'm not supposed to just rub it all over my backside <laughs> and then throw I it on the ground. I think that's what it is. I think you know sometimes uh, if, if a restaurant is is particularly share friendly in the plates, mm -hmm. maybe they can. They don't have to say, "Do you know how this place works?" I think they could say, "The the plates are designed for sharing." Mm -hmm. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be back in a sec. Yeah. The do you understand how this works is a little pretentious. Mm. It's like, we're special, and let me explain to you how we work. Exactly. Uh, number six, uh, they tell you to wait for your waiter when you ask for something. So I like what I think is called in restaurants team service. Mm -hmm. If something's ready at the window or the pass, ready to go to the table, if, you're, if your server's not there, they take it. And who's ever available takes it and brings it to the table. Oh, yeah. You're waiting for an appetizer for every they bring it and it's not even your waiter right somebody fills your water who's not the bus boy that is just the bus boy for your section that kind of thing i like that when some you ask for somebody and they go i'll tell your waiter i don't need to know they're going to tell my waiter i just want it done mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that like a douche but i just uh, could i have uh, whatever could you add the whatever thing to the ice cream to the dessert yeah i'll let me i'll find your waiter no just please just okay yes sir no problem i'm happy to do that for i you. went and sat down at a restaurant with a few friends yeah and we got actually we were sitting in like the best section of the whole place, but for some reason, for like the first 20, 25 minutes, Ignored. we could not get any service. No, no napkins, no waters, no nothing. And literally five different waiters went by that I had to stop and say, "Excuse me, like, uh, are you the server for this area, or can you yeah. find the person who is?" Yeah. And you five shouldn't have to say that. Finally, got to the. You person. You shouldn't have to say that. You should just say, Absolutely. "We're out. We're without napkins. Can you hook us up?" By the way, had a yeah. great dim sum session the other day. Oh, you did, yeah. I'll pull up that picture of the yeah. chicken feet. Uh, number seven: When they squat, take a knee, or sit down at your table. Don't sit down at my table. <laughs> like, whew, I got to take a load off. It is tough working this shift this afternoon. Yeah, I don't want that. Um, number eight: They go straight for the upsell. You know what I don't like? I don't like it when you ask what, 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 you know, what, what do people like? What's popular on the menu? And the two things they list are the two most expensive things. I hate that. Yeah. They're just oh, yeah. trying to up their tip in the end. I understand it. Don't do it. I hate it. Make you feel like a criminal because you just ordered drinks or just dinner instead of seven courses and four bottles of wine. Yeah. Uh, talk about specials without telling you the price. We have a lovely um, sea bass, a lovely Chilean sea bass this evening. It's seared. It's on a little bed of spinach. Comes with a little uh, uh, roasted garlic and Parmesan risotto. No, no, no. And no price. And the specials often are expensive, man. I say, I always say, and how much is that? I think they should tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, Aren't, wait, let me ask you a question about yeah. specials. Am I correct to say that 
mm-hmm. normally when they're pushing specials, well, it's because they have leftover sea you, bass yes, or leftover yes. fillet that they need but to get rid of. If you read Anthony Bourdain's, not mm-hmm. his first book, but the book that brought him to prominence mm-hmm. called uh, Kitchen Confidential, mm-hmm. he talks about the fact that specials in restaurants are things that are on their way out and going bad. Too much sea bass left over from the weekend. They didn't sell it all. They got a day left. If they don't use it tonight, Monday night, they're going to have to throw it out because mm-hmm. it's not going to carry. So they make a special out of it. They make it sound exciting. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes it is. He also said in that same book, it's a great book, Kitchen Confidential. You should read it. He also says when they put a little bread basket on the table in front of you, very often that's the bread basket from the table next door that they didn't get finished. Just boom, boom. One, right. one table Which is, to the next. It's just bread. If it's not touched, that's fine. Uh-huh. But if there's rolls in the basket that the people are like, hey, who wants this? I had this. It's a cheese roll. I had it last time. Nobody wants it. Put it back oh, in the basket. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't want that fucking roll. No. I don't want that. No, thanks. I never questioned. So what does that mean? Does that mean they're supposed to throw them out? Well, Maybe the thing to do is bring a small amount of them. Yes, and then repeat right? it like if they need. If, if there's three people, bring three pieces of something. If they ask for more, then bring them more, but don't bring 10. Let them go through them all like they're sorting their laundry and then have it show up on my table later on. You know, I bet some cool company could work out some system where le- restaurant leftovers were <sighs> saved and utilized for yeah. like homeless soup kitchens and stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of cool. That could be cool. Uh, you know what? There's, uh, there's, there's a lot of companies uh, in cities around this country that do that. They go, they pick up leftover food mm-hmm. at the end of, um, at the end of the night. Some of some restaurants don't do it, or I guess some counties may have rules about that. You know, is it the right, um, uh, not freshness, but what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, health, uh, vitamins, and whatever should that food be going to people that d- have a, a terrible diet anyways? Mm-hmm. The rich, fatty foods, you want to be giving them that kind of stuff? I don't know. I think a lot of restaurants end up, they end up throwing out things, and they don't want to, yeah. but I think that uh, there's not always a good solution for how they get that food to people. One of the things that I really hate that's on this list yeah. is um, you ask for the check. Excuse me, get out the check. They bring the check. You put cash bills in it, right? They pick it up, they open it, they see there's bills in it, and they look at you and they go, do you need any change back? I hate that. <laughs> yeah, I want all the change back, <laughs> and, and now I'm going to now I'm gonna rethink whether you get very much of that. Yeah. Let me decide that. <laughs> Don't say that. Just take it, make the change, and then bring it to the table. If I'm gone, clearly I didn't want any change back. Mm-hmm. If I'm still sitting there, I'll decide. I hate that question. I hate that question. It really bothers me. I think it's just lazy and yeah, it's lazy. Like, oh, are you do? Would you like to be cheap or would you like to give me a really good tip? Right. Which one? Which one would you prefer? Right. Okay. Hey, we gotta hop in the I kitchen. I gotta soon. hop in the kitchen we and do. make this. I gotta make this German pancake. So, um, I'm ready. I'm ready to go in there. Yep. Are you ready to go in there? We're ready. Let's hit it. All right, uh, German Pancake or Dutch Baby 101. It's very simple. Bowl, um, I need three eggs. One, two, three. So do you know if this is like, I don't wait, want to I love that you these. just put them in your pocket. Well, I don't want to smash them. Yeah. So do they do pancakes differently in Germany? Is that why I, this I've, is I've German? never been, I don't, I don't know where this comes from. Yeah. I mean, I assume that, there's some German connection because of the name. Yeah. But what's the Dutch part? But that's what, it's either German or Dutch. It's that part of the world pancake. Uh, okay, so let's do this first. Three eggs. Yes, I can do it with one hand. Hmm. And get shell in there. Crap. You got some in there? Yeah. And you know the way to get shell out is with another piece of shell. Oh, apparently. That's what they say. I just use my fingers sometimes. It's so slippery when you use your fingers. Yeah. Uh, okay, we gotta beat these a little bit. Okay. 
half a cup of regular everyday flour. Half a cup of milk. And I know that this is a dry measure. Did you know that? What's a dry measure? A dry measure are these little cuppy things. They're for like salt and flour and oh, yeah. rice and stuff like that. This, oh, you're saying, yeah, a measuring This cup. is a wet measure for liquids. That's for like dry stuff. They're very close. I've never had a problem. But then again, I don't bake really. No. So. I never even knew that there was a difference. Yeah, that's considered a dry measure thing. Okay, big, you know, whatever. Quarter teaspoon of salt. And I use kosher salt. I don't have table salt here. And I get asked all the time if it's problematic that I use kosher salt in uh, pastry or baking kind of things. Mm -hmm. No, never a problem. So now I don't want to mix this too much. I just want to get the lumps mostly out. If you beat it too much, uh, it won't puff. So it, go. Is a whisk the best way to get uh, the lumps out? Yeah, you need something like that. Okay, I think that's there. Let me think that's it. Eggs, flour, milk, salt. I'm looking at my list <laughs> in red. Not that, you, not that anybody could read that because my printing is horrible. It's really bad. It's really bad. I apologize for that. Okay, we need some butter. So I'm doing this in a, in a nine inch. Hey, somebody put this in the wrong spot. These go here. Mm -hmm. I'm using a nine inch cast iron pan that's hot, that's been in here cooking. So I'm going to butter the sides of this thing all the way around and the bottom nicely. I don't want this pancake to stick when it comes time to take it out. So we'll just make sure it gets all the way around really nice. Does anything smell better than melting butter? Oh no, God, it's really amazing, isn't it? And now you don't want the pan to cool down too much. So we do this quickly, in it goes. Scrape down, get rid of that. Excellent. Check this out nicely. In we go. 400 and 50, 400 degree, 400 degree oven. It's going to take 20 to 25 minutes. And you'll see what's going to happen. It's going to go from here, go whoosh, the sides will build it up. It'll stay like a little cannon inside the thing. It's an, it's amazing to watch. Hey, I apologize for interrupting. Well, I mean, maybe I'm not really interrupting because I'm just really going from me to me, but but so look at, uh, occasionally things go wrong, and when they do, you have to fix them. And the audio cut out at the end of this stupid German pancake episode. I shouldn't say stupid, because it's not stupid. It's quite delicious. But so now here's what I have to do. I'm going to watch the end of this little segment right here on my laptop, and I'm going to talk you through what it is. I, I, I can't leave you hanging. I mean, yes, you could just see pictures of it. It would be obvious, but, you know, I'd like to hear myself talk, so... Okay, so clearly I've just taken it out of the oven, right? The pan is hot. I'm pushing on it to see if it's still fluffy, light inside, which it should be, and it is, because there's really nothing but air in there. And actually, the air is holding up the, the walls of this German pancake. So I put it into a, into a bowl thing. You could put it on a plate. And now you'll notice, now it will start to deflate, which is the cool part. I mean, I kind of like that. It will make that little sort of crater-like uh, thing in the middle. And the way to serve it is this, lemon juice over the top. What I should have done is I should have put some butter on it. And I didn't put the butter. I was trying to think a little healthier, but clearly it didn't work out. So I should have put a little butter on it first. It would have melted in. Then the lemon juice, and then you hit it with powdered sugar. Powdered sugar, lemon juice, butter. It's an amazing thing and simple to make. And as far as I can tell, it's foolproof. I'm an idiot, and I've never screwed it up, so... You could use a knife and fork, 
But clearly, I chose to use my hands with it. I don't know why. I just was done. And I used my fingers. The best tools you've got. Anyway, that's the end of the German Pancake episode. Thanks for hanging out with us. And because I did a pancake, I've decided that the uh, the other two live casts this week will be a continuation of breakfast week. My favorite meal. My absolute favorite meal of any time. In fact, I decided the other day my last meal would be an egg, egg benedict thing of some kind. I want the runny yolk and crab benedict maybe. We're talking about that. All right. That's it for me. 